Welcome everybody, Ashton here from Without Code. In this video, we're gonna dive into our Gallery Connect widget for Without Code. Now this is gonna be a pretty meaty tutorial, so bear with me here as I'm gonna go as efficiently but thoroughly as possible. This is by far the most powerful and most versatile gallery widget available on our platform here at Without Code. It's capable of both photos and videos and can showcase custom categories, allowing your site visitors to easily filter gallery items by clicking category subject buttons. By doing so, we get a smooth and seamless shuffling and reordering of the gallery. Any of the thumbnails are clickable to open up a full screen lightbox slideshow with the ability to add titles, descriptions, and links as well. And while you're here in the lightbox, this essentially becomes its own slideshow where users can continue to explore the gallery here within the lightbox if they choose. If it's a video, we get the same ability, but of course with the added video playback functionality. There are also multiple layout modes available. The layout you decide will all have to do with whether your images are all the same aspect ratio or if they're all different, and also whether or not you wanna display captions and link buttons on the thumbnails themselves. And don't worry, I'm gonna cover all of this once we get into the builder. Larger galleries also utilize pagination. So even if you have 100 images in a gallery, you can maintain a smaller footprint on the page if needed. Lastly, for our intro here, and most notably, as this widget is called Gallery Connect, if anyone's ever used any of our other Connect widgets, you know that the management of the gallery content is handled entirely in an external Google spreadsheet. We actually had a widget of the same name that we built for the Adobe Muse platform some time ago, so if you're at all familiar with that, this will be even easier for you to integrate. Having all your content on a live web-based spreadsheet means that images, links, captions, etc. can all be modified on the fly, resulting in immediate updates to the live gallery, all without actually having to even enter the website or republish the site at all. If you're a web designer handing off content management to a client, a content management system like this can be very handy, especially if it's a website project that requires frequent updates to content. So without further ado, let's switch over to the web builder. Now I'm working with our shutter theme, which is a great theme for photographers, videographers, or any kind of visual art. And let's pretend I'm a photographer or I'm building a site for one, and I wanna swap out my big hero image here on the top of the homepage with a nice gallery using Gallery Connect. So what we can do here is prepare our header row by removing the headline text, removing the icon, removing this text as well. And we also have two spacer widgets here that we can remove as well. Finally, let's open the row settings and remove the city image that's filling the background. There we go. Let's expand our widgets library. And I'm going to shortcut us here and just type gallery in the search bar. Remember, we do have our regular photo gallery widget here as well. And if you're new to without code at all, and you don't need a super powerful gallery, it's probably best to use a simpler gallery like that one to start off with. But for now, let's grab our gallery connect widget and we'll drag and drop it into our same row. Great. Now we can already see some default preloaded content in here, which is great. Now before I do anything, since we're using this as a nice header row on our home page, let's make this a bit more impactful and go into the row settings and set this to be a full bleed row. So now if we click our preview button, we should see the gallery readjust itself to fill the width of the row. And since the widget is already pulling in our sample images from the spreadsheet, we can see that things are already looking pretty cool. Let's head back into editing mode and click on the widget to open the options panel. First option is our unique ID. If you're ever gonna use multiple Gallery Connect widgets on your site, each one will need its own unique ID. But for now, this being our only one, we can leave this as default. Next up is Google Spreadsheet URL. This is the URL of your content spreadsheet, and this is how the widget links up to your content. And before we get into any more customization of the actual widget, I'm gonna jump into how to manage the content spreadsheet and acquire the Google Spreadsheet link to use in your own widget. So down here beneath the URL field, there is a link to Google Sheets content template. So let's give that a click. Once we do that, we're taken to our default view only Gallery Connect template spreadsheet that is already populated with all of the content that we see in the widget already, making it very easy to read this and to make our own gallery. We'll just need to replace the content with our own. Now, as I mentioned, this default spreadsheet is view only. What we need to do to make our own is to make a copy of this spreadsheet. So we'll go up here to File, 
and select Make a Copy. And we'll give it a name, Ashton's Gallery, and click OK. Perfect. Now we have an exact copy of the spreadsheet, but now one that we can fully edit and swap out any of the content that we want. Now we're going to get to customizing it in just a second, but we do have to do one more thing before any of the content can be used in the widget. We need to publish this spreadsheet to the web. So once more, let's go to File, and this time we'll select Publish to the Web. Now there's only one change you need to make here on this prompt. You can leave entire document alone, but we do need to change web page to comma separated values or CSV. And that's it. We can click publish and we're done. We can close out of this. Publishing the spreadsheet to the web is what allows the changes to communicate with the widget over and without code, and what allows you to make changes on the spreadsheet that will then be instantaneously reflected on the site itself without even needing to open the actual site. Last maintenance thing I'm going to do here before we get into customizing is get that Google spreadsheet URL that we talked about a moment ago. This is what we need for the actual Gallery Connect widget that's sitting on our site. It's the final step to connect the two entities. So let's click up here to share. And then we're going to click on here on Get Shareable Link. And there it is. Click Copy Link. And now for just a moment, let's head back to Without Code. And in the URL field here, I'm just going to paste our new link. Beautiful. Now our Gallery Connect widget is fully linked up with our published spreadsheet, and any changes we make on the spreadsheet will translate seamlessly. So back to the spreadsheet. We can close out of this pop-up now, and now let's cover the foundation of this spreadsheet. We've got a number of columns here, each with some information and links entered, and all of this is providing what we see in the actual gallery. So our first column here says Enabled, and it does exactly what you might think. It enables its corresponding row of content, or disables it if it's unchecked. Title and Caption are next, and are pretty self-explanatory. Categories. Now these are the buttons that appear above the gallery, allowing the user to sort through the images and videos. Now it might be a little confusing initially how to actually create a new category in the gallery. Categories are created simply when they are entered into the spreadsheet in the category column here. So there are four categories to start here on our template, and you can easily add new ones by literally just typing something new in any enabled row. You can also place items in multiple categories if you want, and you can do so by typing more than one category in the field for an item. You'll just list them right here with a comma in between. Next, we have a column for image or video, followed by a column for thumbnail. Now, these columns are where you'll place the URL for the full size images here in this column, as well as the thumbnail images for each item in the gallery here in the thumbnail column. Now you might be wondering why there are two separate fields for this, when on most occasions you might want to use the same image for the thumbnail and for the full version. And there are a couple of reasons here, first being for videos. So if you have a video loaded in, the thumbnail field allows you to specify the thumbnail accordingly. Second reason is for image optimization. Keep in mind that when your web page initially loads, it's the thumbnails that are loading in first. The full size ones aren't loading until they're clicked on. So if you're using really large high-res images for your thumbnails, it's actually going to drastically slow down the load speed of the gallery, especially if you have like 50 images on the page. So the thumbnail field gives you the ability to use a much smaller version for those in order to keep page and gallery load speed nice and fast. Another note here on image size. As with any time you're using images in a site build, it's extremely important to use image optimization. If you're loading unoptimized 6,000 pixel images, your page is going to load very slowly, so consider aiming for 2,000 pixels maximum width and then optimizing with a compressor. A couple of good ones are tinyjpg.com or jpegmini.com. So by now, you've definitely noticed that for each of these images and thumbnails, all we're seeing is a URL, and you may be wondering where to get that. The links included for images here have to be direct links to the actual image, not just a web page. So you'll need to host your images somewhere to use this gallery, which you can do on a third-party image hosting service like Dropbox or any other, or even on your own without code website using your content section from your left toolbar. We have an add-on video here in the playlist specifically dedicated to image hosting options, so if you're unfamiliar with this, make sure to check that out if you need some extra guidance. 
Just remember that with some hosting services such as Dropbox, the share URL might not be a direct link. And this is important to remember because the image links you're using need to be the direct links to the actual image files, meaning you should be able to paste those links into a web browser address bar and be able to see the image and nothing else on the page. This also goes for hosted videos. We've got another column here for URL, and this is simply the address for the link button, referred to as the read more button in the widget. And finally, the last column here is the target, which determines whether the button link will open in a new browser tab or the same one. And there's a handy drop down here that you can click to determine one or the other. Okay, so now that we've covered the spreadsheet fundamentals, let's add a few pieces of content of our own and see how seamless everything integrates into the widget automatically. We'll do two images and one video, and we'll add a couple new categories while we're at it. So in my browser here, I've already got some content pulled from the internet that we can incorporate, starting with this first image over here of a dog. This is an image hosted on Unsplash, so all we need to do is copy the image URL. There we go. And we'll head back to the spreadsheet. And let's start with a fresh row, and we'll toggle it on to enable it. We'll give it a title, Black Pug. We'll give it a caption, Pug in Stylish Denim. Now for category, let's add a new category for dogs. And to do so, all we have to do is type dogs. Now for image, we've already got the URL copied, so I'm gonna paste it here. Now many times these URLs are gonna be long, so if they're extending too far, like you can see here, you can go up here to the text wrapping settings and change it like so, only if it's becoming problematic for you. I'll paste the same link for thumbnail, just for the sake of our demo here. I'll leave the URL alone for now, but we'll set the target to match the rest of these. Next, let's do a video. The gallery supports MP4, WebM, and OGG files, as well as YouTube and Vimeo. Now, as with image files, if you're doing an MP4, WebM, or OGG, you'll need the direct link to the actual video file. However, for YouTube and Vimeo, the regular YouTube or Vimeo link will suffice. I have a Vimeo video pulled up here called Dogs and Cars, so let me simply copy the Vimeo link. We'll head back to the spreadsheet. Let's enable another new row, give it a title, Dogs in Cars. Give it a caption, video of dogs riding in cars. And we'll throw this in our new dog category, but to demonstrate the use of multiple categories, let's also assign it a second category that we already have on the spreadsheet called nature. We'll paste our Vimeo link into the next column. Now for thumbnail, I've got another dog image over here from Unsplash, so let me copy that link and we'll paste it in the spreadsheet. And I can fix the target here at the end once again. Finally, let's do one more image just so we can get a thorough test here. I've got one last photo here of another stylish pup, this time wearing some sunglasses. Let me copy the image URL. We'll head back to the spreadsheet. We'll enable one more row. Let's give it a funny title, Cool Chow. We'll give it a caption, Chow Chow and Fab Glasses. We'll do the same two categories, dogs and nature, and we'll paste our image link for both the image and the thumbnail. And then finally our target. Beautiful. Now let's head back to the builder. Now since I've already added the Google spreadsheet URL, I just need to give my page a refresh. So let me do that now. Beautiful. And then we'll pop into preview mode really quick. We can already see the addition of our new category of dogs, and I can click on it, and we get our three new pieces of content. Everything's loading nicely, and if I click our middle one, which should be our video, everything's working perfectly here as well. Let's click back to all and switch back to the editor. So since we've got our spreadsheet squared away, now is a good time to style up the basic structure of the gallery itself. This is how we'll configure things like how large we want our thumbnails to appear, whether we want titles and captions on the actual thumbnails and things like that. We'll start with the size of the overall gallery, which you can also resize the widget with the blue grab handle on the bottom right, just like other widgets. Let's click into the settings panel. And let's look here at gallery layout. 
There are three options here, all with key differences. Starting here with what we see is masonry. Now this layout displays the gallery thumbnails in their original aspect ratios. This gives the gallery a pleasant but kind of non-uniform look and is great for displaying a variety of images with different shapes. Now if we switch this to standard, this is a mode that keeps the aspect ratios uniform. So if you're using images of different aspect ratios like we are now, you can see a clear issue with the spacing between the images. But one thing to keep in mind about standard mode is this is the only layout that displays the titles and descriptions on the actual thumbnails if they're enabled. If we scroll down the panel a bit here to the gallery item settings sub menu, we have an option to toggle on a bunch of various things like item title, caption, buttons, all kinds of good stuff. Each time you do, the gallery will give itself a little bit of a refresh, but if you're looking to have labels and information visible like this on the actual thumbnail, standard mode is the way to go. Let me toggle these back off for now. And now let's go into our last layout of uniform. Now this, of course, also displays the images in a uniform fashion, but in this case, as opposed to standard, the widget is actually cropping the images, forcing them into a uniform display. Now even though they're cropped, they'll still display at their original aspect ratios once you click on them into full screen lightbox mode. Next option is thumbnail columns. Now here you can determine the number of columns in the gallery, of course, and this is also the best tool for determining how large you want your gallery thumbnails. Lower column counts will result in larger thumbnails spread across the screen, especially in full bleed rows like this one, and larger column counts will result in smaller thumbnails. Now another thing to keep in mind here, hearkening back to the layout selection, the other two options of standard and masonry will pass along their original aspect ratios of the images into the gallery thumbnails, but here in uniform layout mode, since the gallery is constraining the images, you may need to adjust the gallery item height setting to achieve the image shape that you want, and we're going to get there in a second. Next setting is a toggle for random order. Now this setting, of course, randomizes the gallery images. Otherwise, images go alphabetically based on category name. Allow filtering. This allows users to click on a category button to filter the gallery images. Disabling this will eliminate the category buttons entirely. Allow pagination. Now this gives larger galleries the ability to break the gallery up into pages if the image count exceeds the number used in the items per page setting in the pagination settings, which we can access right down here. Note that if you have a large gallery, disabling pagination will result in a very tall gallery. Okay, we're almost to the finish line, folks. Let's jump over to the design section of the panel. And there are a lot of options here, and many of them are self-explanatory, so there's no need to explain each of these one by one, but there are a few key points I do want to point out. Let's click into Gallery Item Styling, and we can see that there's an option here to enable shadow. Now, when using the standard layout mode on a page with a white background, you might find that it's hard to tell what labels belong to what image. So enable the shadow option to show grouping of these items more effectively. Also in this section, we have padding. When shadow is enabled, as mentioned above, you might find that the image and title and caption are too close to the shadow, so utilize the padding setting here to add some extra padding. Also here is a hover effect. So as it says, this setting allows the use of hover effects seen on gallery thumbnails, but one important note here, if I drop this menu down, you can utilize the item title setting to show image titles when hovering over gallery thumbnails. So this can be useful in the masonry and uniform layout modes, which don't allow for displaying titles above the thumbnails. Finally, I wanna click on gallery item title styling and gallery item caption styling. There's an option at the bottom of each of these for show title in lightbox. Both the title and caption may be displayed in the lightbox when an image is clicked, and these can be enabled individually in their respective styling sections here. Okay, I think that about covers our Gallery Connect widget for without code. Thanks for hanging in there with me on this one, guys. Lots to cover here, but at the end of the day, this puts a tremendous amount of control in your hands, and not to mention your clients' hands, when it comes to adding visuals and media to their site that they can control. Have fun with the power and versatility of this widget, and of course, if you run into any issues at all, don't hesitate to reach out to us and support. Thanks again for watching, and we'll catch you in the next video.